Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the Senior Strategist for WealthPress. Today is Tuesday, it's June 28th. The market's gonna open up in about an hour and 14 minutes to be specific with you. As you guys can see, the Dow's up pretty good, about almost 200 points. The Nasdaq is doing really well, uh, up about same if you were using the same value. And the Russell is doing very well. We can't forget about the Russell, especially the last week of June, when the Russell has a turnover within its sector or within its index, where the old stocks go out and the new stocks go in, and it tends to rise between the 23rd of June and the 29th, or the basically the first, the last week of uh, of June. And we've talked about that in my videos and so forth. And I know some of you have done pretty well. If you've made money on that trade, send me an email, support at marketgeeks.com. It doesn't hurt you anything. Or post some comments below this video. Now, let's get into today's analysis. We've got some interesting things on the table today. We've got international trades and goods and services. This will give us a good idea of how the supply chain issues, more so than the inflation is impacting the global supply chain right now. This will be very interesting for consumer staples, I believe. Then we've got consumer confidence. Now remember, the last consumer confidence number from Michigan about two weeks ago was awful. I mean, it was just awful. So if we can get some love from the consumer confidence today, leading us into the GDP, that would go a long, long way. Now, the consensus is pretty good. It's 101. The range is 95 to 104. So anything at 101 or better should be, should be pretty good. That's what we're looking for. Another major factor that you want to pay attention to uh, is, this, is, this, is this curve or lack of curve, this horizontal trading action. The more the bond market can go stagnate, can go sideways, the less pressure this will relieve off of the stock market. The more down the bond market goes, the more pressure it puts on the market. Another major factor you wanna look at, especially between today and tomorrow end of day, because we have GDP, the biggest report of the quarter that the Fed uses to gauge how much to uh, strengthen or weaker or weaken interest rate hikes to control the inflationary pressure and so that we can control going into a recession. So this is gonna be a huge, huge number. So you wanna pay attention to the bond market, really wanna pay attention to the bond market and see if it's gonna break down or if it's gonna stay within range. And you wanna pay attention to volatility and whether or not volatility is going to break down right here back, go back within its range, which would be very, very significant. So there's two major factors we're looking at, the bond market and the volatility. If volatility breaks down all the way here to the 23 level, that will negate all of that CPI that we saw two weeks ago that caused the spike when uh, we found out that the uh, consumer price index is 8.6%. So that's huge, huge, huge. So keep keep your eye on the international trades and goods and services that's coming out in about 40, uh, 40 minutes. And then keep your eye on the consumer confidence. I don't know why it's coming out at 10 a.m. I mean, they should they should make this out before the market opens. But I'm just glad it's before the GDP, not after the GDP, so we can get some idea of how confident consumers are. And remember, consumers drive two thirds of the economy, and the GDP is two thirds consumer confidence. So it's really important to get that report ahead of time. Let's talk a little bit about global economy. Oil prices pushed higher. Oil U.S. futures also advanced. Anytime you see the Dow Jones really strong right now compared to the Nasdaq, you know that futures that the energy prices and the commodity group is having a good day. As they wrapped up its uh, G7 summit, a group of seven leaders were finalizing a deal to seek a price cap on Russian oil, raise tariffs on Russian goods, and impose other new sanctions. And a lot of people are asking me if I think energy is topping out. I'm going to be honest with you. Till this war is done or till we see the end on the horizon, I don't think energy prices are going to go lower at all. I think they're going to wobble in the current range. Investors will get an update on the U.S. economic growth on Wednesday from the Commerce Department after we see the first quarter domestic product, the GDP. U.S. consumer confidence data is coming out today at 10 a.m. That's what I just talked about. Uh, China shares have gotten a boost from easing pandemic restrictions, and and um, one of their one of their uh, big cheeses said last week that they're going to take extraordinary measures to spruce up the economy. So that's very 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 big in my opinion. Stock closed out last week with solid gains, and the S and P boosted its best day in two years on Friday. 
Yes, it's best day in two years on Friday, but rallies in a bear market could be very, very big. So again, let's not let's not jump to a bull market just yet and be very defensive. Markets rallied as pressure from rising treasury yields let up somewhat and investors speculated that the Fed may not have to be aggressive in raising interest rates as earlier thought to control inflation. And this is what I'm talking about. The more we can go upside, the less that curve will show um, higher rates and higher rates is what's pressuring the stock market. So what I just explained to you with this, this horizontal analysis is kind of what I just read to you um, right here. Market rally, rising treasury yields. So the more the bond market goes higher, the lower the yields. The more it goes down, the higher the yields. Remember, the bonds are inverse. So yield, bonds down, inverse up, uh, yields up, yields up, bonds down. So again, Wall Street has a few more reports this week that could provide more insight into inflation, economic growth, and, path, and the Fed's path. Um, as I mentioned, we've got the GDP, we've got um, consumer confidence, international trades and goods and services, that's going to lead the pack today. And then we've got personal income and jobless claims. Honestly, unless there's something really squirrely with these, and I'm not expecting it to be, don't focus on it. These have been really good. They've been on par. Um, then we've got ISM manufacturing index on Friday. But honestly, the big report this week is GDP. And Mr. I'm not going to predict the future till I get reelected. Wink, wink, Powell speaking. Uh, that, that guy just drives me mad. Um, looking, looking at the sectors. Now, here's remember, today we're going to talk about the strongest sector, weakest sector. Now, pay attention. If you look cumulatively, no surprises. Energy is still leading. You've got the discretionary stuff still lagging. But I want to show you something. On a cumulative basis, look at consumer staples, they're number two. On a monthly basis, look at consumer staples, they're number two. Energy's last spot. I don't wanna mess with energy right now. I'd rather mess with consumer staples right now or healthcare. Healthcare is really coming up right now. So in my opinion, let's do this little step by step. Uh, let's go to, let's go to um, the stocks and we'll, we'll go with too. So, so here we go. Lamp Weston Holdings, frozen food company, the number two stock right now. I love this stock right now. I think we're going to have a food shortage in the world, folks. And healthcare, look at this. You got Vertex Pharmaceuticals, Bristol Myers, Lilly, Merck. Definitely healthcare is starting to come up and consumer staples is starting to come up. You got Dollar Tree here. Um, so, so, so my advice is to, for now, Let's just put energy on its own little area because it's 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 squirrely right now. It's going up, down, it's all over the place. So let's talk about the best sectors being consumer staples and healthcare. They're still defensive. They still go up in an inflationary period. And right now on a shorter term basis, they are leading. So I'm not really lying to you. I'm just want you get the, you know, I want you get the most accurate analysis. And I'm nervous about the energy sector because on a one month basis, it's the last spot. And all the energy stocks have been going down a little bit. And the non-energy stocks like medical healthcare stocks and consumer staples are starting to come back. But Oxy is still leading. So that's Warren Buffett's favorite. That's my favorite energy. These two right here, Oxy and Valerio. The bottom line is Lamb Weston, LW, and Bristol Myers, if if I had my choice. Those would be the best stocks. And the best sector is we gotta we gotta take two instead of one. Consumer staples and healthcare, and both are defensive. And on the downside, that's easy because we have the defensive stocks. We have the, uh, I mean, excuse me, we have these speculative stocks. I'm gonna go with Bath and Body Works. It's definitely the consumer discretionary, the consumer stocks. It's still consumer stocks. So I would go with Etsy, Dish. If you want communication, you got Dish. If you want consumer discretionary, you got Etsy. You got Royal Caribbean, which is a real dog. And you got Bath and Body Works right here. So in my opinion, where's that cat? There's that cat. I got a little cat here. He won't let me pick him up, but he wants me to pet him. He wants to have his cake and eat it too. So in my opinion, um, the best stocks are the healthcare consumer staples and the worst stocks are the, the consumer stocks. So you've got Dish, you've got Bath and Body Works, and you've got Royal Caribbean. Netflix, uh, too much of a risk. Too much of a risk. So that's what I've got for you today. Now, before I let you go, at 1 p.m. today, legendary trader T Buzz, Tom Busby, and I are pulling back the curtain for the first time in history on what he's calling the single stock game plan. Not only 
Is this game plan designed to keep you from having to stare at your computer during this hot, musty summer months where you should be spending time with your kids and family? News, stock charts all day, who needs that in the summer? Throw that all out with the bathwater. But it can also give you a peace of mind in trading that you deserve, especially in the summer. It's hot right now. The single stock attack plan has been crushing it this year, while the broader market has been in a disaster. And it's all accomplished by simply tapping into just one stock each week. One stock, just the best one. Quality, not quantity, especially during summer months. If you haven't already secured your spot for this live reveal, then be sure to click on the link below before it's too late. And tomorrow, one long, one short, actionable trade idea. Folks, this is the first time this year I think T-Buzz is launching a new program. You do not want to miss out. The single stock game plan is where you want to be right now. It's your ticket to making money and enjoying the summer too. Have your cake and eat it too. Sign up. I'll be there every step of the way. We're going to have a lot of fun today, 1 p.m. Eastern. Bye, guys. I'll see you on the other side. Follow the link below to check out Single Stock Game Plan. And send me some love letters. Post some comments. Support at marketgeeks.com. Bye.